questions. Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Wisconsin Shoe Guy. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and I'm here today with Sean from Dashing, who is uh, hosting a trunk show for Edward Green. And what we're gonna do today is do a series of videos talking about Edward Green and some of the shoes that we have on display, as well as some of the great leathers that are out there. So Sean, why don't you tell us a little bit about the belt that you're holding there? Sure, uh, this is an Edward Green dress belt. So basically the belts can come in a couple different widths. They do a dress belt uh, width, which is what a lot of the guys are going for, even though in modern standard, it's pretty narrow. Um, however, this is in London grain. So uh, when you compare that to, I don't want to step in front of the camera, but London Green's been huge. Uh, they're about two years old coming out of the store. They saw the demand for formal dress leathers dramatically changing in late 2018, early 2019. They pivoted really quick. They came out with London Green, which is a very heavy grain leather, right. and they slapped it on Dover's, and they slapped it on Chelsea's, and on a bunch of boots. You've seen it online. They do it, uh, there's a black shell cordovan, black, London Grain uh, Galway boots sitting on the website. Right. Phenomenal. They've been putting uh, the cognac is the big color right now that's been going on. Cognac Cordovan darkened with London Grain shaft. Interesting. So, so let me ask a question about the London Grain because when, I, when you go into the description about the grain, it actually calls it a buffed leather. So what does that mean when they say buffed versus... Um, that's a really good question. So, I can't answer that. All right. So what, what, what I can say is that yeah. I have that pair of bison boots or oh, yeah. shoes that I did, and those are buff leather. Now, buffing is a very common practice in cowboy boot leather. Oh, yeah. And what they do is they actually grind off, you know, from the regular top grain. Yeah. Right? So like in the, or the top line of the full grain. Yeah. Right? So instead of this being an embossed leather, they actually carve it out. Okay. That makes okay? sense. So it's a little, it's a little different. And um, in my mind, it makes it a little bit more of a natural look because you actually have the full grain leather experience, totally. but you still have a grain. Yep, okay. I would have to agree. This is why I lean on other experts other than myself. <laughs> and so, I will admit, the minutiae of dealing with a store is a little narrower sometimes than dealing with absolutely. professionals and stuff like that. But I learn something every day because that's why I depend on this community. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and just kind of going down the table. Yeah. So let's start classic Chelsea. Um, you know, it's a model that used to be ginormous. We'll get to the end of the table. There's an updated version towards the end of the table. Okay. Um, this is just in dark oak antique. A lot of guys are always curious about how sometimes the antiquing looks a little bit darker on some other shoes. If you get it in a lighter shade, you can have it burnished extra before it gets shipped. Uh, they'll even touch up even just straight black. I had a client request just a black shoe stock. It came with extra polish on it. They shined it up. A lot of other brands don't do that from stock shoes. I was pretty impressed. Yeah. But this it also has the swan neck on it. Which yeah. is kind of cool because a lot of if you look at these like a Park Avenue from Allen Edmonds and your mm -hmm. your what I'm gonna call your your entry line shoes, they don't go into that level of detail. No, it's just normally the uh, you know the arc of the shoe. Right. Um, yeah, I mean it's an awesome detail. I'm you know this is on an 82, very classic almond toe shape right. from all uh, from green. So a couple of other things I want to just show on this is notice how the sole here is actually a lot thicker than it is in the waist. They carved the waist down a little bit. Now this is a, That's, what a square waist yep. here on both sides, but it's, it's interesting how they do that. But that's actually only the traditional leather sole. Right. This is the alternate version, if right. I'm gonna zoom in on that. Yep. This is a tapered two to one. Yeah, can you and, move it yeah. this way, yeah. there we go. So basically this, they taper it, it's double to single. I really like this, this has been very popular both with MTOs and with a lot of shoes you see on the website. Plus it just makes a regular traditional Dover right. have a very kind of new modern aesthetic on a leather sole that sells a little bit of elegance without really having to bevel the waist and whatnot. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times it gets used on the dressier Galway boots where it just gives it a little bit more of a nice aesthetic. So even though you're not putting a rubber sole on it, it has a nice, you know, leather sole aesthetic to it. Um, then moving down, I what, mean, do they, what do they call when, when when somebody's doing an MTO for green? When when they're looking at like the standard sole versus the other sole, what what do they call it? I, there was something like an AGB or something like that. It's half. It's, it's half. yeah. It's half. So N1 is a classic leather sole, which is technically actually that's this. Um, Hold on, I'm gonna. Just yeah, which is this. Yep. This is considered a half. Anytime it starts tapering and it gets right. a taper, those are, considered, those are considered the half soles. So again, there's a whole bunch of leather descriptors. If you really want it, I do have it on a sheet. I'm more than willing to share. Um, so everyone kind of knows because it does kind of get confusing. Um, you know, the Dover can be done. This is a 606. This is the classic Dover soft chisel. 
Um, I'm personally not a big chisel fan, but if I had to do a Dover for my first one, I would probably do a 606. Yeah. Especially when we move around the table and you see a 606 done in London grain and black, it's really sharp. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, it just, but this can also be done on a 202, which is a little bit more my preferred last from green. I like that a little bit of extra toe. I like a little bit more room, especially versus an 82. It makes it look a little bit more, I like to use the word modern, but again, that's, you know. Well, I'll, I'll take that a step further. I guess it's more of like a modern elegance, right? Yeah. And, and if you look at my shoe collection, which, which those of you who watch understand is, is rather extensive, there's a, a big difference between where I'm looking at rounded toe shoes, which are your traditional lokes and things like that, versus your chisel toes, which are really more like the Meccariellos and, and some of those, Christmas. what I'm gonna call like a forward design, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and the forward design makes the shoes um, look a little bit different to my eye, mm -hmm. and so I tend to go in that direction, but I also recognize the value, like my, my Francis Wapplinger shoes have a round last because they just look that good. Yeah, I mean that's, you know, I mean, unofficially, and again, I'm not good with historians, but I'm pretty sure that's why the guys left to do G&G. &G. They wanted a little bit more chisel aesthetic. They liked the aesthetic, but they thought green was a little restrictive. And again, don't quote me on that, but that's kind of the history that I kind of yeah. heard through the great I think guys. I've seen Tony Gaziano say that. So yeah, so, you know, they did that, and I totally respect that. You know, I mean, I think there's a look for it, depending on where you are. For instance, like, I'm not a big fan of Corte. It just didn't work for me. And I think that's a personal thing. I love selling it. The guys who are passionate about Corte, they're so fun to come in and do makeups with, but the toe shape didn't work for me. And to be honest, neither did G&G. &G. Right. Green really works for me. That's why I've stuck with Green and why I stick with Alden and in the future, some other brands. But it's one of those things where, you know, then there's options where they do have a chisel option that they're working on with like a 915, which is a little bit more of a chisel toe with a little right. bit more of a vertical um, edge on it. And then some other stuff that's coming up new. But kind of working down, I mean, and then here's the total polar opposite. I mean, this is a 64. I mean, this is a country boot last. Right. You know, they cook in the up and over, so you have a lot more room for thicker socks, especially like the 72, which is very similar, which actually has a little bit more of an internal cant. Um, you know, the Galway boot is just that kind of chameleon. You can do it on a right. 82 and make it super elegant, where you see a lot of the cordovans. You can put it on a 202, and it's very utilitarian. And then you put it on a 64, and it's ready to go trouncing around. Right. So, you know. Well, one of the things I like about the Galway boot is that it has the fake or the faux cap toe, mm -hmm. which allows you to have a line that you can shine to, yeah. but it also doesn't provide that three-dimensionality, which a lot of guys don't like. And, and I, if I look at my field boot collection, it's split like half with faux toe, mm -hmm. toe and half without. And I think that it's a, it's a cool thing. Now, obviously, green is the father, if you will, yeah. of this style, and, and they've been doing this since the 30s. It's a, uh, it's a really, really solid style and something that uh, I think everybody should have one of, at least, in their boot collection. It's just such a solid triple stitch. It just looks so elegant, you know, and I agree. You know, I've been contemplating trying to figure out for somebody doing a Shannon, and I wanted to see if they have a Shannon in a triple stitch so it gives you that line in an elegant dress shoe without putting a cap on it. Because so I think it just gives it that, like, just like you said, it gives it a line to say this is where the rest of the shoe begins versus the toe. Well, it's also easier if you're if you're doing it in a grain leather. Totally. Like thinking from a shoemaker perspective, yeah. they don't have to line up the pattern yep. exactly on the toe. Yeah. And if you look at the lower cost shoemakers, that's what they don't do. Mm -hmm. And so you look like you have two different pieces on your foot, Yeah. Right? which is different. Yeah. So, and then yeah. moving down a little bit further, uh, ironically, when I opened the store, I requested a couple of table shoes, one being a Galway, because everyone loves a Galway, and another one being a new market, because I never had one. So everybody now in a post-pandemic world, it's loafers and something casual. So whether it's Alden, you're still looking at boots, you're looking at Leisure Handsome Loafers, you're looking at the Duke from Green, lots of Piccadillys this year, I've sold more Piccadillys than I ever have before, and the other guy is definitely a new market. Chelsea boot, everyone wants one. Uh, luckily, Green responded, their website's full of them. Uh, the lead time for this year with me being open a little late was a little bad. Spring trunks are though, we should definitely do a whole ton of them. Um, yeah. I might do a house one too for next year. Yeah. You know, yeah. this I, is an 82. It has that rock and roll classic. Looks good with a pair of dress trousers. Looks cool with a pair of jeans. You do it in black. It's just like, it's an evil kind of fun rock and roll boot. I, I was really uh, very reticent to, to get a Chelsea boot. And when I got my first one, I was lucky and I just dialed my size perfectly. Yeah. And um, it was a chain elastic and that made a, a, a 
a difference to me and my confidence with Cheney and all the other makers mm -hmm. in the UK. And I think that this is a, a good example. Now that I've tried the 82 and, and you were kind enough to let me try it yeah. out here today, I think that this is uh, something that's definitely in my future now that I'm comfortable with the idea that a Chelsea boot can actually fit my foot. Yeah, the other thing too we've talked a lot about, I've had a bunch of clients this week request like the jobber boot. But the hesitancy is because of the dynamics of a jobber, of how the pattern is, a jabber, how you want to pronounce it, um, the fact that it wraps, the different variations from different makers, you know, and how sometimes it bulges in places you don't want it to just because there's leather there. That's why, you know, I was just all guys, I'm like, if you can do a new market or you can do a Camden, the slightly shorter one, and we can make it work, I think it's a little safer bet unless you're like solidly in on it. But I will say, a jobber with, in like, a dark oak with a suede strap looks just so cool. It's right. like so modern and new. Well, one of the things we talked about earlier was when you have people come out and do the polishing here, you really see a big difference when they start layering on color after mm -hmm. color after color. I think that this is one of those things that a lot of guys tend to forget. They get shoes out of the box, and if it's not a high-end brand, it's not really polished. Yeah. And they don't necessarily understand, well, wait a second, if I spend a couple extra hours on this first polish and then I just continue to yeah. build it over time. It makes a huge difference in yeah. how the shoe looks. I mean the higher grade yeah I mean the higher grade shoe, the leathers are it just absorbs it so much cleaner. I mean we can do a photo layer, you know well, I can I can I can yeah, do I want to go down. So my Mel Burns are a perfect example. They came out of the box basically looking like this and then you know Right. Three or four years later, whatever it is now, with a lot of dark oak, some black on it, it just looks great. Now, minus, I know of Rogue Shoe, you have the stitching, and obviously they burnish it a little bit heavier around right. the stitching and whatnot and around the broguing, but it just takes on a whole new life, and it's so much darker than when you see just a stock Melbourne coming out of, you know, the uh, uh, factory, and it's just kind of like a wingtip. And you're like, hey, this is great, but it just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of effort right off the back and it just makes it look, it's such, such a base going forward for what it can be later on. Right. So, moving on line, Banbury, classic Chelsea.